I don't know what Wargaming was smoking when they designed this ship, but it's a lot trippier than anything I've ever smoked. And I can tell you that for an absolute certainty, you can sort of see an indication for it yourself if you take note that the secondaries on this Tier Six British cruiser are firing at a Nelson that's more than seven kilometers away. We'll get into that in a little bit, and of course we'll run down the stats, I'll show you my commander build, and the armor scheme on this particular cruiser, but before I do any of that, I just want to watch this sequence here versus one of my favorite ships in the game, HMS Nelson. You see there, he hits us with some HE, and for this sequence he's going to shoot HE at least one more time which I don't think he knows this, but ironically, the HE is the correct choice for him. It is actually going to do damage to me. And to be fair, we're not going to do a whole lot of damage to him as he pushes in, not with the main battery guns, anyway. These guns, of course, shoot only AP, because this is a British cruiser, and they do seem to have the improved AP characteristics of all the rest of the British cruisers, which is nice. And then our secondaries, well, they do have a long firing range, but they are almost completely useless. I don't think they'll really pen the Nelson anywhere. They're not especially accurate, and they might start fires here and there. But of course, being a British cruiser, we have access to torpedoes. There are three on either side, and we can use the unique British feature of single firing them. But did you see there that the Nelson switched to AP and then bounced all of his shells? off of us. That's right, against a tier 6 light cruiser. And of course, he continues to push in, we aim all the torpedoes in a single line, they all hit his bow, and he is nearly doomed. We just need to turn around, I think, and launch the torpedoes off of the other side, because from this angle, our main battery AP is probably not going to be enough to remove the remaining 20-30k hit points that the Nelson still has. He takes a hit from one of our teammates out there, but we're just going to launch the rest of the torpedoes off the other side of the ship. He may try to shoot at us once more, but he's not going to deal any damage, not with his AP. And there goes the Nelson. That's why I say this ship is somewhat evil. In fact, let's begin by taking a look at the armor scheme. Here we have the ship in port, and let's take a moment to remove the crazy looking Star Trek skin, just so we can see that this thing is basically a Fiji. Could be more like an Edinburgh, I don't know. In any case, it's a light British cruiser. Well, the armor is much like the Edinburgh's armor. 30 millimeter plating all around the board here, on the sides, on the bow, on the stern. The Citadel does sit above the waterline and is exposed, so if you get broadside, you can certainly be dev struck. But this is 30 millimeter armor plating on a tier six cruiser, right? Okay, so there's that. But let's also take a look at the commander build I've got, because this thing does, of course, come with a unique British cruiser commander, who, when Wargaming was designing him, I think they might have been thinking of, I don't know, some memes. I'll show you what I mean here. This is the commander and the build that I've settled on. We've got Swirsky and Makawa for double concealment. We've got Ingenious, full speed ahead, punch through, Sword of Collis, which increases AP shell damage that travel less than 7km, and Will to Rebuild as well as the base trait, which decreases incoming damage to the cruiser while the secondary battery is aiming or shooting. This thing, or this commander, this guy's a bit of a meme, and so is this ship, which, with its 30 millimeter armor plating and long-range secondaries. Let's run down the stats real quick as we load into our second sequence here that, once again, will demonstrate the power of this battleship-like cruiser. This thing has 31,400 hit points, which is not a lot, but you'll notice it also has two base charges. Well, we can only see one because we've used one in this match. But it has two charges of the Repair Party Consumable, which is an improved or super heal, much like the rest of the British cruisers. At base, it restores 627 HP per second for 20 seconds, which is a total of something like 12.5k potential HP restored. 
The reason I'm running Will to Rebuild, not just for the infinite heal gimmick, is because, of course, it increases the HP restored by the repair party, and with Will to Rebuild on this commander, you get the potential HP restored somewhere near 12,900. Not much better than the base stats, unmodified by Will to Rebuild, but still pretty good for a cruiser. So it's got that heal and that HP. It's got 12 152 millimeter guns, which are both sort of the highlight and low light of this ship. These are basically Fiji guns, as far as I can tell, and Fiji guns are, of course, pretty good. The problem with these guns is they've got absolutely no range. They've only got a base range of just over 12 kilometers. I've got it up to 13 even with the epic booster of battle propensity flag, but that's almost no range at all, and if you want to build into it, then the Klingon commander is not going to be your guy. I'm using him because clearly this ship is intended to be played with him, and well, let's talk about the secondaries too, because of course his base trait. The secondaries have a base range of 6.3 kilometers for some reason. There are eight of them, they are 102 millimeter guns, so they probably can't pen anything. They reload in 3 seconds, and they fire HE shells with a maximum of 1,500 damage and a 6% fire chance. I have gotten a close quarters expert or two in this ship, and I've lit a lot of fires with these secondaries, but mostly the reason I've built into range with the secondary mod, I've got these secondaries firing out to 7.8 kilometers with just the secondary mod, reason I've got that is because of the commander's base trait, which reduces damage while your secondaries are aiming or firing. Clearly, this thing is intended to be played at close range as a bit of a, bit of a brawler. It's got no main battery range, and then it's got long-range secondaries, and it's evidently meant to be played with a commander who improves the tankiness while the secondaries are shooting. Then, of course, it's got torpedoes, which we've already seen. There are three of them in two triple launchers on either side of the ship for a total of six. They have an eight-kilometer range and a 61-knot speed. They hit for a maximum of 17,100 damage, which is actually really good. They reload in a snappy 72 seconds, and they have a 1.3-kilometer detectability by sea. The thing's also got AA, but I haven't really faced too many CVs against this. I don't think the AA stats are good. Certainly the aggregate rating is not, and I suspect this ship probably cannot very well defend itself. Maneuverability, though, is likewise excellent. Oh, and by the way, there you see the Colorado hit us and potentially even get a Citadel. You do have to be careful, even with the 30mm armor plating. But the maneuverability here, too, is good. It's got a speed of 35.1 knots if you use the epic booster of battle propensity flag like I do. It's got an incredible turning circle of 590 meters, which I think rivals some destroyers. And then it's got a six-second rudder shift time. And the concealment with my double concealment inspirations in Makawa and Swirsky is... A very, very strong 9.4 kilometers by sea. So this thing is a stealthy little brawling cruiser with some secondary range in order to activate the gimmick on the special commander and no main battery range whatsoever. The main use of this ship, as far as I can tell, is what you saw earlier against the Nelson and what you're about to witness now against the Colorado, who also cannot damage us because we are coated in 30 millimeter armor plating. There he goes. We actually get the high caliber and devastating strike after that one. Basically, this ship is crazy. This is like what would happen if you took an Edinburgh from Tier 7 with its 30mm armor plating and made it a Fiji at Tier 6. In fact, I would say this thing is probably a little bit broken. And I'm sure if you use another commander with the ability to increase the main battery range, it would make the ship a little bit more comfortable to play, but I don't really see a good reason for doing that. This thing is probably a little overpowered, but I can tell you it's pretty fun to play. I don't know that I would recommend buying it outright, because this Star Trek stuff is pretty expensive, and the commander himself, I don't think he's going to be all that worth it to you on any other British cruisers. 
But just for the meme's sake of this thing, I don't know. This is a weird one. So I hope you enjoyed the video. If so, give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing if you haven't already. And I'll see you next time. Goodbye.